Hey y'all, welcome back for part 3. In this one we're just going to define the data objects that we're going to be using in the game and I'll explain each one the best that I can. One important thing to realize is that we're going to be using custom resources to store data that doesn't change between objects, but we're going to be using nodes to actually create instances of those things. So take a workbench for example. It's going to have things like name, texture, unbuilt texture, resources to build, work required that won't change between each workbench. They'll all have these same starting values. But once we instantiate a workbench in the game, it's going to be its own node. And all of this data is going to be put into a single variable called data. And that won't change. Things that will change will be like how much work remains to build the building, what resources are at the building, the crafting queue, and whoever's currently working on the building. In this video, we're going to be making the following custom data types. Building data, item data, recipe data, and tile data. First, we'll start off with the building data. This will be a custom resource that we can use to create and store data for each building in our game. To make a custom resource in Godot, just go to your file explorer, make a new script, name it building data, and make it inherit from resource rather than from node. These are the variables that we'll need. Each building will have a name, a texture, which we'll use for the sprite, an unbuilt texture, and Rimworld that just kind of uses a blueprint, so we'll use that when we get to the art, its width and height in tiles, resources required to build, work required to build, which is basically how long it'll take to build once you have the resources there, whether or not it's a resting spot, like for a bed, and what recipes it can create if it's a crafting building. If you don't fully understand this right now, don't worry, because it'll make more sense when we start actually creating buildings. Next up's item data. This one's a little more simple. Give it the item data class name, and we'll give it the following variables. Name will be the name of the item, Edible will be whether or not the item can be eaten, which is false by default, and that's it for item data. Alright, next up is a recipe data. Each of our crafting buildings will have a list of these that they can create. Think of a recipe data as just a set of inputs that equal a set of outputs. For example, 5 stone and 10 wood could be used to create a stone axe. Each recipe data will have a name first of all. The inputs variable will just be a dictionary, just like in building data, where each key is going to be an item data and the value will be how many are needed to make that recipe. It's the same for the outputs variable, just a dictionary of item datas with the values corresponding to however many it makes. Other than that, each recipe will have a work required variable to say how much time it takes to create the item, just like with building data. Last one's cell data. In RimWorld, each cell stores things like temperature, fertility, and things like that. We're not going to go that complex for right now, but rather than leave each of our cells as null, we want to assign each cell a cell data so that it has its own information that we can build on later. For right now, these will just have a name and a texture, but when we make our actual in-game objects that use nodes instead of resources, we'll add more for each instance of these, like position and occupant. And that's going to be it for this video. Sorry it took a while to get it out, I just wasn't sure whether or not I should include cell data, but figured it'll be useful down the line as things get more complex. I'll catch you next time for when we start off with making our pawns. I'm going to split that into a couple of different videos so I can get them out faster, but until then, peace out.